Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, I want to show you how I design an app flowchart. Okay, there's a lot of different tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis which have nothing to do with development or very little to do with software development. As a app developer, of course, you have Xcode, you have Android Studio, and I use WebStorm, and I use Sublime Text and all the coding things, but we also do a lot in terms of managing a project and giving quotes. So I'm, I talked before a lot about Basalmic. I use Basalmic for prototypes. My team uses Adobe XD to give like a really nice looking prototype. Uh, I use the desktop version of Basalmic, not that online two projects for $5 a month kind of thing. No, I use the desktop one so I can do as many as I want. Uh, we use Slack for communication. Occasionally we use Skype. Lots of different things that we use. We use Trello, we we'll use Google Sheets, we use the, the G Suite and everything. But when it comes to flowcharts, that's a key part of doing a software project. And for that, I use Lucidchart. I wanted to show you a little bit how that works. Now, this is not an endorsement of Lucidchart. I think their, their tool is, it's okay, right? It's okay. And previously I used Gliffy, but my favorite diagramming tool is Microsoft Visio. But since I moved to a Mac, I can't use Visio anymore. So when I was in a corporate environment, that's just the way that I thought. So today I wanted to kind of go through how I use Lucidchart when we're diagramming out an application because this is something that I, I've talked about before. I think that designers, they, they typically designers don't get paid as much as developers, but I think development is a bit easier because you can define it a lot better because you could, if you, if you know what you're doing like a senior developer can define it for a junior developer easier than one designer can define it for another designer, in my opinion. So have a look at my screen. I'll just go through quickly a lucid chart here, which is again, it's an okay tool, right? It cost me like five, I think it's $5 a month and I have to buy it quarterly. Um, and they, they try to sell me the business version of it where I can share with other team members, which would be really awesome. But like every one of these online tools, the personal version is like this much. And then if you get a t like a team version or a business version, it's this much and they hardly give you anything extra. So, so have a look at my screen here. So every time we talk about a, a software project, a lot of times I'll do the same sort of diagram. So um, we have all these different shapes up here. By the way, I am not into all the, I'm not into UML, although I did read a book about UML back in the past. I'm not into, I mean, database diagrams, that's different, that's important. Uh, but I don't use a lot of the different shapes. I just use the standard basic shapes. It might be one of the reasons why Lucidchart is the same. So we have all these ones over here. Even then, I don't use all of them. So we always start off with a, a Terminator here, which would be like the start point and the end point. That's the way that I've always done them. That's the way that I was taught. I know some people only use it as a start point. So I'll say like, for this, I would do like app opens. Let me just make this a little bit bigger here so you can see it. App opens. And every time an app opens in when, we, when we're doing something for a quote, we always start the same thing. Um, if, it's a red, if it's one that requires registration anyway, so uh, is logged in. So the, tro the diamond is a decision tree. So yes or no, or it could be like a menu or whatever, but it's basically when something, something has to be decided. So is it logged in? Uh, so we, the, the first step is yes. If, if yes, I'll go to the main menu. If no, and the, the squares are processes or I use, I use them as forms or as processes. A lot of this kind of stuff is basically just to get the point across. So I know people who use diagrams all the time will say, technically that's not right. But the whole concept here is to get the developers to see what I see in my head. So let's go registration form. So I go, if they're logged in, just go straight to the menu. If not, go to the registration form. And then once they're logged in successfully, then it goes to the login, the main menu. From here, we would go through a different decision tree. So we say, um, user clicks button. And then from here, I might go through and say, whatever, play. Settings. score, right? And from here, it does try to go through and try to 
guess what you're going to say here, but I'll just do that. And it's so it's being able to identify how it would work. So let me go back out here. And most of the time what we're doing, if we're dealing with a, another API, it's also where we, we talk about the different interactions between them. So I'll do something like, let's move all of this over here. I'll put a, uh, I'll put a, a background on it. Right click. Arrange, send it back, right? That's my. My app. And again, it doesn't move around a little bit here, so sorry about that. Bold. Move that up in the corner. Increase the font a little bit. And then I will also have my API or my server, my server code over here. And it'll be basically the same kind of thing. So here I might have something like, um, let's see, auth forward slash login as a rest call. This would make a call here. And, and usually I put like a dotted line because it may or may not actually happen. And then let's change the fill color on this to something a little bit more, oops. More unique so that would be my server code my client code, and then we could basically go through and map out the different touch points so doing this kind of thing we think what are the decision trees if an error happens what happens there and everything and then usually we'll do something like a an off page link so that that would say other stuff and it really depends on the application itself but most of the time we do a lot of the same kind of stuff so other stuff other stuff and what this does is it allows the client to see what's in our heads and allows the developers to see what's in our heads so we can see the 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 flow of it so when the application first opens up you should only have to register one time you should only have to log in one time every other time if you're already logged in and it stores it in local memory it should go straight to the menu after that you go through and the user clicks a button here and just move that over and usually just line it up a little bit and just do this and usually our quotes include some sort of flow chart in it something like this or an architectural diagram so the flow chart we do a lot of and really what we're doing is we're going all the way back down to the final terminator where the app closes like that is there there like I said I was a big fan of Visio because that was free and we use a lot of these. I've used um, several of these and if anybody out there knows a really good diagramming tool for Mac that's that's not um, a monthly subscription, I'd really love to know about it. But I've, I've looked around everywhere for something and I haven't been able to find it. So a lot of times when we're doing that, we're sitting down with the developers, we're talking about this is how it would work. The other thing we do a lot of is just architectural diagrams. So you've seen this one a zillion times before. And like I said, I always use the same shapes. I know there's all kinds of other stuff, but usually we'll go, Okay, so we've got database, API, Android, and occasionally I'll do something where I'll take a iPhone, This is usually a dual connector because it updates in both ways. But a lot of times it's not, for me it's not so important like if it's completely right, like grammatically or whatever. Just as long as the developers can understand it, we can understand it. And we go over here and we'll add some color to it. Usually I'll add a little bit of color to it. So that would be the admin website. Right, just so we get a full glimpse of everything. If I if I had something over here like push notifications, usually if I do something like push notifications, I'll do something like, um, let's see, the push notification would trigger everything.
And again, because that may not necessarily happen, I'll make that as a, some sort of dotted line. But so that's how I work. I use this tool almost every single day when we have meetings with developers, when I have meetings with clients. Sometimes I sketch it out on the whiteboard behind me, but nobody could read my handwriting. So it's, it's, it's a really good tool. If you're not doing something, like if you're gonna hire developers, or even if you're just working with other developers, it's good to have these flows in, 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 in place. Now they could be like really, really granular, like if an error happens, then do this. You could actually do a try catch in a flow chart. I wouldn't recommend it because it's just, that's insulting to the, the intelligence of the developer. They should kind of know that type of stuff. Even over here, the registration form, it should say, do you already have a login and take it to the login? But most of the time we don't do that kind of stuff. But the flow charts is a very key part of what we do, especially when we're defining the API. We talk about what are the touch points of the application? What, are the, what is the user decision? This, along with the architectural diagram that I just showed you, along with the mockups, some, some quick wireframes, that usually helps the client see what we're trying to do in, in the quote document and it also lets the developer see what we have in mind. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. For those of you guys who use different diagramming tools, which ones do you use and how do you find it? Lucidchart, it's okay. Like I don't use most of the stuff that's, that's available for it. Most of the time if I do like an Android type of thing, I'll do, um, I'll do like different, and like I'll do the Android icon or whatever and depends it depends on how much time I have to pre it up a lot of times it is just quickly you know let's think of how this application is going to work communicate what's in my head with the developer with the client and everybody's thinking along the same different level so which de which development which uh for those of you guys who do flow charts how do you do it I, I just tend to be a very visual person I can't I can't read through a bunch of text and get it I have to draw it out in a diagram so Anyway, hopefully that's been a little bit helpful. Sorry, fiddling around a little bit. Never done it live before or right in front of people. So anyway, that is it for today. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow.